everyone. Welcome, welcome. If you're tuning into the replay, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to another Crabscope from the Crab Street Journal. We're going to uh, just talk about hermit crabs again, whatever comes up. No specific topic tonight. Just a uh, chat. Anybody wants to tune in? Hello, welcome, welcome. Just getting things set up. I'm a little late tonight because I went to a movie. And then I had to come home and feed everyone. Hello. Are you from uh, one of the Facebook groups? I feel like I feel like I've seen you in here before. Is That's not you, Anne, is it? If you're new, just uh, say hey and tell me where you're from. We're just looking at my hermit crab tank right now. Just put food out, so I'm hoping to see some of the kiddos out and about. And I have one crabby still in a painted shell, but we're in the shell shop, so maybe We'll get lucky tonight, and while we're periscoping, we'll get a shell change. But I just hope that he or she changes shells, period, because that painted shell really needs to go. It's been around for at least three years, maybe a little longer. It had an E in it to begin with, and when it finally changed out of it, welcome from Pittsburgh. Are you on the Facebook group, or are you just uh, happened to catch us from Twitter or something? So an E changed out of that, left the shell, I guess, um, overnight or something before I noticed it, and then this little Caribbean crab moved into it. So normally I snatch the painted shells out when somebody leaves them, but I didn't get a chance this time. So I don't know if you can see, it's that pink shell with like the lizard Thing on top. Thanks. It's a flower pot liner that I got at Dollar General and it's like 14 inches so it can hold a ton of shells. I had it in to begin with just as a dome and then I put in uh, this water pool back here, this large saltwater filtered circulated pool and I had to move the dome so I decided it would make kind of a really nice natural shell shop. So. I just have it flipped upside down and so it gives them extra climbing surfaces inside and out keeps the shells from getting burrowed into the substrate and helps keep the shells clean so they're not getting filled up with loose substrate do you have hermit crabs I'm assuming from your name that you do tonight we're feeding color enhancer that is from Deliciously Crabby, and then from Hermes Kitchen, we've got the seafood platter, cashews, and then blueberry crumb, which, let me move my paper so you can see. There, now you can see it better. And then some leaves from a Burning Bush. Yeah, I was uh, really happy with the way it turned out, and it was really inexpensive. We still have um, at least one, if not two, of these in the prize closet. So if you enter to win one of our photo contests on the website, you can uh, pick your choice of prizes from the prize closet, and you could get one of these. I went back to Dollar General at the end of the summer to get more, and they were completely sold out. So I don't know if they'll be back next year or not. And these are unusually large. Like normally they're 10 inch or 12 inch and this 14 inch size is I think kind of unusual. So yeah, it's me, it's Stacy. Is it Beth? Pittsburgh PA, you have, you're Beth. Another little guy in there trundling around. I 
I adopted, oh, like 20 little um, micro peepees uh, this summer from somebody local who adopted them from a woman who like bought 200 of them. So I have several of those really little guys. Hi, welcome. Just let me know where you're from as you jump in. And what kind of crabbies that you have. If you think somebody might be interested in watching our crabbies, feel free to share. And if you're not already following us on Twitter, we're at Crab Street on Twitter. Thank you for the hearts. Hearts for the crabbies. Really hoping we're going to get a shell change tonight. Vanessa should be coming along. I know she was around. I was just talking to her. And she's going to do a Periscope tomorrow. And it'll be something timed a little better towards Aussies and uh, the Brits. People that are not in you know, the, the U.S. area and time zones, Canada. Pam, it's Pam. Okay, welcome, Pam. Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking, Beth is in, oh, Beth might be in Philadelphia, actually, sorry. I know as I'm shaky. It's great that you're here, Pam, how exciting. I think that our poster's going to be done soon, and I'm really, really excited about that. Oh, it looks like we have our first taker for dinner. Gonna go for some cashews maybe first. That guy is such a dark color almost. He really looks brown but kind of has a blue hint. Going for the cashews. In the front is blueberry crumble and that is a seafood platter and that is some color enhancer from Deliciously Crabby. I also tried feeding um, one of the cookies I bought from Deliciously Crabby, as well as this, uh, here, I don't think I can see it if I do that. This salad mix, and then this like spicy stuff up here. I didn't seem terribly interested in it, so I finally gave up and took it out. Oh, the painted shell Crabby left. I really thought we were gonna get a shell change. There's Vanessa. So you guys have any questions? You made it. I thought we were going to get a shell change. My one last crabby that's in a painted shell was in the shell bin, nosing around, but gave up and left. So I guess that's not happening. We got one taker at the food dish, having some cashews. Hi, Leah. I really like that stump, too. And it is my Viola's favorite place to be. My bigger Viola right there. That little guy or big guy is, like, almost always in the fake stump. There's the wee one climbing up back there. I see one of the shells and there has a hole in it, so I need to get in there and get that out. They also have some crushed up, or not crushed up, um, cicada exos. I don't know if you can tell that that's what that is right there. I think I accidentally pushed the other ones underneath the leaves, but they have some busted up acorns and the uh, leftover cicada shells that I found outside, the exos couple kernels of popcorn left over. Uh, my tank is 150 gallons. So I can stand up. I know I'm going to make you guys seasick. I am so not good at holding the camera stable, but I'll stand up a little bit so you can see. Doo -doo. Yeah, six feet long and then two by two the other way. So there's one end of it with the turtle dock and the bridge, one of the bamboo tunnels, there's a tree back there. I have moss in that corner and I'm struggling to keep it green, but I bought it live and uh, 
the stuff on the top is dead just from like the stuff you buy at Petco. So then I've got that big log. The fresh water is back there. Another tree. There's another log that's running back behind. That's all leaf litter up here in the front. Then we've got the net. That big cork bark. Uh, then this is like my rock beach area. That's a turtle shell. Yeah, it is a fish aquarium piece. And I probably got it at PetSmart. Um, I mostly shop at Petco, but PetSmart has better reptile stuff. So then there's like a cork wall right here. This is like a, a panel that you're supposed to put on the back of your tank, but I'm using it as a divider to keep my substrate separate from the rocks. That's the sensor for my wireless thermometer and hygrometer. And I have the readout thing just sitting on the floor right now. And that's that's what it's reading down there. So it's not quite as hot down there as it is at the other end of the tank. And then that's just a bunch of sandstone rocks, some fake plants, bamboo tunnel leading down into the saltwater pond. There's another fake branch in there. It's just like a kind of like a pitchfork shaped branch. And then I bought that water filter and I really like that and just put it in that bin. There's some coral sand in the bottom of the bin so this cycles the salt water for them. And I got these little uh, cocoa hut things from Stacy Spangler at Isopod Connection. How cute are these? I put the moss in there but um, she sells these as, as well as those bridges and I have two of these. I just love them. And I did catch one of the crabs in one the other day. Uh oh, don't mind my arm. My lid is falling. Um, I had to sort of rig up a, a barrier up there, so I used a clear plastic plate. I ran the power cord in that black tubing, which is a cable protector, so the crabs can't electrocute themselves, and it protects the power cord. And then the plate is to keep them from escaping. They can climb that, but when they hit it, there's nothing for them to grab onto to get around the plate. So they can't get out. Because we all know what Houdinis they are. That back there is my timer. One of my light hoods. That's a, a three fixture. I used to have two of them and the other one died. So now this one's just a two fixture. I love that waterfall. Thank you. It's relaxing to listen to when I come down here too. I really like the, the bridge also. I think that's really cute. Do you have turtles? Well, you know what? In all fairness, here's what happened. Here's how I came by that. And the crabs have loved on that thing like you would not believe. Uh, several years ago, maybe as many as six years ago, we had a terrible drought here in the Midwest. And it was nationwide news because it was slowing down barge traffic. Because the river was so low, the barges couldn't clear the river. And um, my sister works for the railroad. And down in the train yard, turtles were dying everywhere from the extreme heat. Hi, welcome. And then the birds were just picking those turtle shells clean. And so my sister just thought that um, I might like one for the crabs. I don't remember asking her for one, but she just brought it home. And so uh, I left it, I left it outside for like another year because I didn't want to boil it, but I wanted it to kind of bake in the sun. So it, to try to make sure it was free of parasites, I didn't want the house to smell like boiled turtle. And I didn't know if it would like weaken the shell. And then I put it in there and thanks so much for the hearts. I put it in the tank and it has been in there ever since. And they have literally just picked and picked and picked there's hardly any scales left on it and it's completely disintegrating on the side so that's kind of cool you can sort of see how it fits together there's actually teeth in there but they have gotten so much enjoyment out of that and the turtle died because of the drought there was nothing I could have done about it so I feel like at least this one <laughs> maybe didn't die in vain because my crabby's got so many years of pleasure out of that one shell. 
So if you can ever come by a turtle shell, your crabs will love it. The little, the bridge um, from Isopod Connection. So you technically can buy these from um, Petco and PetSmart in the bird section, but um, they have metal on them. You guys, thanks so much for the hearts. It's so happy that makes me so happy that the crabs are getting hearts. Um, and you can also buy a short one connected to one of these cocoa huts. But again, they have metal on them. And Stacy Spangler at Isopod Connection makes both of those, and you can buy them from her. So you're supporting a small business, and there's no metal on them. And she also sells isopods, so if you can't get roly-poly bugs naturally, and I'm having trouble getting them this year, but I just realized when I was listening tonight to the radio that it's because it's been very, very dry this fall. Normally, we have a very wet fall, and so it's not moist and there's no rotting vegetation outside right now. So I think that's why the roly-poly bugs aren't as abundant as they normally are. So I haven't been able to wild collect any. So you can buy them from Stacy Spangler. And she even has these black and white ones that, sh that are called Dalmatian isopods, which I think is really cool. And, yeah, probably a lot of calcium in that shell, I bet, you know. So I feel like... If a turtle had to die, at least it was a circle of life, right? So um, I'm going to try. I'm hoping we're going to get rain from this hurricane. Everybody thinks that we're going to get some long soaking rain from the hurricane. So maybe that will bring the roly-poly bugs out and I can get them going in my tank again. They've never really um, successfully bred and kept their own population going. I've only tried putting them in a couple different times, so I think I'm going to be a little more aware of it this year. Oh, there's a spider. It's also that time of year. Sorry. That was gross. Um, hold on. <laughs> i got to put my phone down so I can wipe the dead spider off my hand. <laughs> Live on Periscope. Hold on. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to put, try to put a larger group of roly-poly bugs into the tank this fall and see if I can get a colony to establish itself. Now we're trying some seafood after sampling the cashews. And Vanessa will be doing a periscope, um tomorrow for the people that aren't in the North America region that way she can do something at a reasonable hour for the Aussies and anyone else that wants to tune in at a different time of day I think the little guy out of there too same time as today so it would be 11, did you say 11 a.m. your time? But still, 8 p.m. if you're in the central time zone, if you want to tune in. And then, uh, Vanessa, post your your Twitter and Periscope handle for Lycos so that people can follow you so that they'll get the notification. If you're not following us, uh, to follow me, you just tap on the little person where the hearts are coming from in the lower right-hand corner, and that'll pop up a screen so that you can follow me and other people that are in the chat right now. And then to come back to the Periscope, if you just tap up on the, the feed again, it'll minimize that window back down and you'll just be back in the full window. I really would like to get some more driftwood because the pieces I have are just these two long... No, no, it's been in there. Um, I think I repositioned it since the last Periscope because I changed things around and um, I propped that tunnel up like that and I needed a way for the crabs to get onto the bridge so I kind of lifted 
this up and brought it to the front to just give them another path. I've had that for a long, long time too. But I kind of want more of a, I love the one that you have that like comes up over your dividing wall and um, I wish I could find something that was more like the stump even. Yeah, they do. Um, I've only seen um, a couple of the bigger crabs on there, but they're definitely using it. So I would imagine once the, the smaller crabs discover it, they'll be up there too. It's funny how they use that tunnel as their little elevator up and down to the turtle dock and they don't climb the outside of it. They climb the inside and then they come up here and hang out in the turtle dock. I've got to get some more moss tomorrow. They spilled most of it over the side. So my live moss is still sort of half alive. I, I don't know if it's, I think it may still be alive under there and they just knocked the old moss down on top of it. But I keep misting it every day trying to keep it surviving. And then I don't know if they really ate any of the flax sprouts. They're all gone now, but I don't know if it's because they they knocked them all over and walked on them and they just kind of um, started to break down. But you don't see yours eat the moss. Mine love moss. And they're in this moss. They've been burrowing under it right there. Somebody has tunneled down in it. I noticed that today. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to unplug my charger here. My phone near was like over half dead. We went to the movies and I didn't realize the battery was draining while we were in there. So I got home and I was like, oh no, I don't have enough battery to do this. But we're going to try anyway. So, right. Now I lost it. Right there. Somebody is digging down in the moss. In this moss. Oh, you have it in the cocoa liner. Yeah. I mean, this is nothing but crab poop. <laughs> they just camp out up here underneath this and eat moss and poop. <laughs> it's her favorite thing. And that one crab that I posted the picture of is like, typically, every time I come down here to the tank, it's either on his way up or on his way down. I'm surprised we only have one taker. I feel like... Either they're not super interested in food this week, or they're not interested in what I'm feeding them. The, the stuff I tried from Deliciously Crabby, they were absolutely not interested in. One of them was a, like a crabby cookie kind of thing, which I thought they'd go crazy for because like at first somebody drug it out of the dish, and then it just laid there. They never touched it again. And then the other stuff was this salad mix which I thought oh they'll really like that and then this stuff on top is like a spicy sweet and spicy kind of thing and they didn't really seem to to be into that either so and I gave them um four days with it in there and they just didn't touch it and then I tossed some popcorn in there last night and now and there's hardly any of that left so I don't know. I'll try it again and see. Sometimes I have to offer them a food like three times before they'll eat it. I don't know why. I would think that would all be stuff that they were sort of used to. And they're eating this stuff from Hermes Kitchen really well. Or this guy is anyway. Eating the cashews and then the seafood platter. The packets, the dishes that I held up, or the little Ziploc bags. I bet they did. Oh, the food they didn't eat. That was the... was this one. Which was like a sweet and spicy I think it's honey and then it's got like some spices in it and then this it was some kind of salad so it has like it has um just dried lettuces it looks like and stuff in it 
dried carrot, dried tomato maybe, and it had um, seeds. I think they might have been green pumpkin seeds. And they just, like, I don't know if they even came anywhere near it other than dragging that cookie out. But I even tried moistening it because it seems like sometimes um, these guys are more attracted if it's wet. The crab chart, I think, is getting really close to being done. Um, while I was sick last weekend, she messaged me and I had forgotten to give her the text, which was obviously delaying things. I thought I had sent it to her, so I got that to her, mm, I think last Sunday. So I would imagine that we're going to have a rough draft any day now. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to see it with the text on it. It's going to look really good. This is the the bag, just from the color enhancer. I'm not sure what all is in there. I don't remember, but I moistened it just a little bit. Do, do, do. I took some of my bigger shells out tonight because that one little crab was in there and I thought they were going to change so I put in several more Babylonians just to see and then there's I've got a smaller Aerolata everybody is super excited about those knee right shells aren't they those things are like gold I think the Babylonians are the ones that they typically are painting also so it's kind of unfortunate that that's such a well-liked shell and that's the one they choose to paint and ruin. Yeah, those knee rights are hard to come by. I bought... Thanks, Pam. I still would like to do uh, some additional stuff with it. I bought... I bought a roll of to bring my phone back here um i bought a giant roll of burlap that's probably i guess it's probably like six inches wide and i don't know if i want to wrap it around something or if i just want to like drape it like these bridges but i have a lot of unused climbing space still like my back wall back there i could easily put something along the back wall back there. I even still technically have space back there. I have a good sized piece of net back here, but I could really, I could do netting along the back or I could maybe do some of that jute and maybe some more fake vines. But I just want to continue to maximize my wall space. I'm trying to convince my boyfriend that I need another tank. He, he uh, told me one day that I had, there was enough room down here for another tank. So I said, well, are you going to build me a tank? He's like, I didn't say I was going to build you a tank. And I said, well, you told me that I should get another tank. And he's like, no, I said there was room for another tank. And I said, well, why would you say there's room if you weren't implying I should get one? <laughs> so we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, you can, you can add a lot of stuff if you make every available wall a climbing surface. You can add a lot of extra area to the tank, you know, a lot of places for them to climb and to get up and around and kind of be stimulated by their environment a little bit better. And there's so much stuff that you can use and you can get, yeah, yeah, definitely, Pam. Um, you can get the fake vines much cheaper at some place like Michael's Crafts instead of buying the reptile store ones. I've got water spots on my tank. I'm trying to see the guy back there. 
so none of my fake plants came from the pet store. They all came from Michael's. And they're getting kind of worn. I definitely could stand to replace them. So I'm maybe I can do a long vine from one end to the other across the back and and then maybe like loosely wrap it with the jute and um, that would give them multiple surfaces. My big my biggest E is right back there behind that guy. He has been out and about a bunch. No interest in being photographed though. I have tried. I also got this um, spool of just like uh, jute or twine and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Yeah, it is very busy. I mean all E's are but this one as soon as you come by he just like you know snaps into his shell and falls down from wherever he's at. I'm trying to get in my bin here so I can show you the this is the roll of uh, burlap that I got so it's 10 yards so I have a lot and it's really wide so I just have to come up with the best way to use it that I can incorporate some more climbing space and a second another another level I um I have another turtle dock to fly. Let's see if I can. So I have this one. I could do that. I have the two different bamboo. Um, and maybe if I wrapped it with the jute on the outside, they would climb on the outside of it because it is pretty slick. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I could wrap that one also because it's not touching the water. So I wouldn't want it to leach my water out but it doesn't touch the water, so I possibly could do that there, and then they would utilize the inside and outside. But so I have this, this other old turtle dock. It has a couple shells in it that I'm keeping separate. Um, I still have to cut the suction cups off of this one. Look how they've chewed this thing up over the years. So I've got to cut the suction cups off and then uh, use my command strips and mount it so that it'll be up there like that one is. And uh, I'm sort of thinking about putting that one in this other front corner over the salt water because right now there's not much being, other than the net, there's nothing really that they can utilize over there. They haven't really shown any interest in that cocoa hut yet either, but I feel like that's just a matter of time. It's just something new they haven't discovered yet. Hopefully we got some more kitties coming out to eat. Doo -doo. So what's everybody up to tonight? I went to see a movie. And then I just barely got back. I got back at like a quarter to eight. So I had to feed the, uh, feed the dogs, get the crab situated with their food the cat wanted to be outside and then my phone wasn't fully charged then one of the dogs had an accident on the floor you got your fitness trainers home you're periscoping from her house too funny Vanessa and Pam who you watch him play hockey are you a Bruins fan Does she think you're crazy for watching hermit crabs on Periscope? No, 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 not the Bruins. Uh oh. Um, who? Penguins. Penguins. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that that's like asking me if I'm a Blackhawks fan. But really, I was a, a Colorado Avalanche fan when I lived in Wyoming, and I followed them until I moved to St. Louis, and then. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, then it was so hard to catch the games, and so then I kind of started watching the Blues. 
So I'm somewhere between the blues and the avalanche, depending on where I'm living. This guy's still chowing on the, the seafood. He's been eating for a while. <laughs> Is that a bad ah? Do any of you feed uh, burning bush leaves to your hermit crabs? That's been something I've fed um, pretty much every single fall, and they're always a big hit. I like your name, too, Little Tech Crab. The mango leaves are a big hit. Oh, there went the E. Did you see that flicker back there? <laughs> must have noticed me. <laughs> I looked at um, some of the mangrove seedlings on eBay a couple days ago, so I think I may order some of those. They should do fine in the saltwater pool. That would be kind of cool. Uh, Alaska crab. You know, I, I've looked at her store a few times, too, and um, was going to order some stuff. She has some really unique stuff also. But I was thinking those mango mangroves would give uh, a climbing surface out of the salt water, and it would be okay if they were if they got kind of tall, because as long as they didn't have anything around them that the crabs could get onto the edge of the tank, they wouldn't be able to escape. You know, so if I keep them kind of central, it would be the same kind of thing as with the plate. They would just hit it, and they wouldn't be able to get out. That is a nice thing about having these uh, plexiglass lids. As long as the crabs don't get along one of the edges, they can't get a foothold to escape. So they do work nice for that. My viola, the biggest viola, well, it's the viola in the biggest shell is inside the, the fake tunnel there. Somebody else is coming out. My dog's down here. <laughs> You're making noise. So how many shells do you guys think that you have? Like, you become... When you have hermit crabs, you become a, a shell collector also. Yeah, if you... If you look back there, you can see, like, that corner is up. And over there, that corner is up. The heat makes the plexiglass naturally kind of cup. So um, it often is up at the corners or I slide it over. Like I can sl just slide it over a little bit. They're not really on there really good right now because I've been in and out of the tank um, before Periscope. And of course, while we're talking, I'm, I've moved them around and stuff. So yeah, I can just adjust them. There's also holes in the frame right there, so air can come out there. Last time we got some of the crabbies out and showed off the different species, but I don't see anybody <laughs> except the Caribbeans right now. But I do know Vanessa loves our purple pincher Caribbean crabs. Let's see if we can get this guy. His uh, pincher is actually almost orange. But he recently molted. You can see the... Come on, phone. This low light is hard for it to focus. There. You see a little bit better. You can see the long toenails. They are so cute and typically so easygoing. This one's being very, like, cranky pants. Hmm. You see how dark that one is? 
really dark, but the leg tips are lighter colored. Another little Caribbean back there. Vanessa's been working on the Cafe Press site and getting new designs uploaded for us. And we went through and kind of cleaned out um, a bunch of the old products to make way for newer designs and stuff. So we should have kind of an official reopening soon. The store is still open, but we're working on re-adding products. Oh, so anyway, yeah, back to shells. Like you, you end up becoming a shell hoarder at the same time, right? So that's, this is kind of the current shell bin, but I took out um, two, four, six, eight large shells to make room in case that one little guy was going to change shells. I thought, well, maybe I'll move some big ones to make it easier. Um, so that's not my full collection of shells. I also have this bin. which is like smalls and mediums. These are the ones I just took out, but I also have, um, this is what's left of the knee rights that I ordered several, several, several years ago. I ordered like a half pound bag and I still have these left. These are small, but they're like the zebra. And then I have some, some tie shells also. And then I have this bin of shells. <laughs> so these would be mediums and larges. I do have some jumbo black murexes. So these are enormous and quite heavy. You would have to be a big old crabby to haul one of those honkers around. But when you get up in those bigger sizes, you're pretty limited to the type of shells that are available in that size. This is a very, very well-worn African Turbo that I keep just because um, the one PP that lived in it wore it for a long, long time. You can see it's really, it's rough now and, and all pitted. This is more like what they normally look like. This one needs to be boiled and cleaned up, but that's usually what they look like. I also have a pretty good size jade. This I think was like $15. Here's another one, it's just not polished. So yeah, I have that enormous bin there and it's, you know, fairly deep. So, and then upstairs I have um, two really large Tana shells which are very thin walled, but even bigger. I love the turbos too, especially the tapestry ones. Um, they're probably the biggest shell that you can get. And if I ever get a crab that big, at least I'll have something available that they could change into. Even though they're very thin walled, I don't know how I mean, I guess they have no choice in the wild. I wouldn't think that that would be a very protective shell, those Tana shells. Two little guys back there. I wish at least one of the Indos was out and about so I could get them out and let you guys see them. The weather's changing here and it's getting cooler and cooler. So I don't know if, if that's affecting them a little bit because typically they're quite busy. Um, see the little guy back there on the water dish? I can't tell if that is one of the kvipes. Can you see him down there? I think it is. Yeah, so I'm wondering, I mean, because they had been super busy and now they're kind of acting like they're not eating much and not as many of them are out and about, so maybe it's the change in the weather. Hello. Hi, little guy. I love these kvipes so much. They are so sweet. And they're so little and cute. There's another Caribbean back here. 
hide underneath the log. I bet there's nobody in here. Oh, I'm wrong. Look who's in the little cocoa hut. <laughs> the little painted shell bugger. And there's a turd on top. <laughs> the Kavipes seem to love to dig down around this water dish. They're always kind of huddled up near it. I'm not sure what that's about. Thanks, Vanessa. I like yours too. I think you've done a great job getting it set back up. Do you have any crabs above ground, or did they all go back down on you again? <laughs> yeah, you know, PetSmart does do only natural shells. Oh, you do have some above ground. Well, hopefully I can tune in tomorrow night and see your crabbies live. They do have just the natural shells, but often they're... Their setup is terrible, too, so I don't know. I typically don't shop there. I get, because I, I buy so much other pet stuff with dog food, cat food, um, I get better rewards from Petco. So I just typically shop at Petco. But if they merge, I don't know what that will mean. If we'll get a, a mix of products and what will win over the painted or the plain at nighttime. Yeah, see? That's perffect. You can do like, a t what's t 2 a.m. your time and I'm usually going to work. <laughs> so you could catch the early morning crowd in the U.S. and all the night owls in Australia. Does anybody have any questions? Pam, do you have any questions or anything else that you want to see? Are you planning on doing a Crabble Lantern for the contest? Oh, I'm so shaky. You see the little guy in the turbo back there? I also got my Eco Earth from Dr. Fosters and Smith. My lights are my heater. I don't use a under the tank heater. And so you can see, um, well, you can't see right now. You can see like that one. That thermometer is 78 degrees right there under that light, and that's with the lid open. And then um, 77 back over here in the shade. So my lights put off a fair amount of heat. I am going to try... Do, do. Put the lid back on here. I am going to try getting a heat mat, though because this room sometimes gets cold in the winter. And I have, um, on the back wall of the tank, I don't know if you can tell, the back wall of the tank is silver. That's like a reflective insulator. Let me come down here and show you. It's this stuff. So it's like a reflective cardboard. And it's what they use to insulate your ductwork. Your humidity is still high. You should be able to hopefully vent a little bit and, and bring it back down. But that reflective stuff insulator seems to help even more with keeping the heat in the tank. But like I said, this room gets cold. So I think I'm gonna try um, a heat mat on the back wall and see if that helps keep this uh, the temperature up better. Once you get once you kind of get things stabilized, it's so much easier. And maybe it's because I have a big, well, sometimes mine's up to 80 some percent. It just depends. But um, 
it's probably easier because I have a big tank. It doesn't fluctuate so wildly and so easily. But anyway, somebody this week said that that's what you used on your heat pad. Okay. Hi, Marnell. <laughs> you got the one from Home Depot. Okay. Um, so somebody this week said that he ran across um, their heat mats, but they're meant to be for plants. So they do the exact same thing that a under the tank heater does, except they're significantly cheaper, which I don't know what the difference would be. It's a heat mat. So he bought one and is testing it right now. So if it ends up working out for him, I'm, I think I'm going to get one of those because I should be able to get a big one for my tank at a really decent price. And then um, if it does a good enough job, I'll be able to turn my, my red lights off completely at night until I get the true like moon glow that don't put off any light. Marnell, you crack me up with your pictures of your crabs. That shell shopping one just had me giggling today. You're so funny. So yeah, if you're needing some, another heat source, check out a grow mat for a plant instead of the really expensive one sold by Zoomed. Do you use a rheostat or a thermostat on your heat mat at all, Pam, to control the temperature so it kicks off and on as needed Maggie <laughs> okay you guys look come here oh she won't do it she has a big glob of hair stuck to her mouth come here she can't hear me she has a big like cat hair mustache right now no you don't use one so when you when you vent your tank to let some of the humidity out, you lose too much temperature. How much are you venting? Like normally when we do these chats, when I put food out, there's like five or six crabs out here eating. And the tank conditions haven't changed. More efficient when it comes to electric consumption. Probably, yeah. I just, so when I started crabbing, it was common practice that you put the heat mat on the bottom of the tank, which didn't make sense. But, of course, if you put it on the wall of the tank, you lose all your heat. With a tank this big, I had tried a heat mat before, and it lost its adhesive almost right away and started falling off. So I thought, if I put a heat mat under this huge tank, how in the hell am I ever going to be able to make sure it's working or check it or move it or replace it without emptying the entire thing? Use a stick to open about an inch on either end. And you lose a significant amount of heat that way. Is there any way you can just do... <laughs> they got shy. I think it's a change in the weather. I think they're feeling the change in the weather. So maybe try try venting it a little less. And it, Yeah, it's going to take longer for the humidity to come down. But that's okay. That ease coming up inside the cork bark. So having a tank heater underneath my tank would never have worked for me. So that's why I went to the lights. And the lights have always been fine, but the house I lived in before, they were in the basement, but there wasn't a window in the same room with them. So the temperature didn't fluctuate. And in this house, I have a large window in this basement room. Yeah, well, now everybody puts them on the tank wall, but everybody insulates them. So, totally makes sense, but that's not what we were doing when I started crabbing. And it, it underneath the tank just wasn't going to work. So, now that 
everybody's like safely insulating. I don't even have to insulate. All I have to do is slide it in between the glass and this, this uh, insulator I already have on there and I'm good to go. That's what you do too. Okay. Yeah, Pam, I think you'll be okay. Just vent a little less and give it time to come back down on its own. As you're finding out. Yeah, I've seen that. Like, that's the new thing. But <laughs> there's that E again. What we used to do is instead of saturating the entire tank, right, the hermit crabs, there's a bigger risk of them burrowing right on top of the mat and being too hot or continually moving away because it's too hot. But we would recommend that you pour. Sorry, my throat is itching. That you would pour a small amount of water in the corner of your tank and then just let it leach out into the substrate to help keep it damp. The tank, putting it on the side of the tank, makes way more sense to me. Not arguing that, just that it wasn't done at the time. Okay, Vanessa, have a good walk. And being afraid of catching things on fire, I wouldn't have been brave enough to have insulated it on my own and tested it out. And this has worked really well for me up until moving, so I don't feel like I'm missing out by not having a heat map. But I am going to try it this year because I would like to get my temperatures a little closer to 80 at least on you know one end and uh, keep it there through the winter I have two doggies this one is Maggie and she turned 17 last week her sister is Sissy and she's Sissy's probably 15 my cat is 15 so I have three senior pets. Oh, somebody was going to try out the color enhancer, but now maybe not. Kvipes on the water dish with one of the Caribbeans. <laughs> now that E is back there. I swear they're so fast. They just zip all over the place. I don't know why my throat is so itchy. I'm having like an allergic reaction to something all of a sudden. We have a, um, like a, what do you call it? Not a nursery, but like a store that sells supplies for people who are gardening and um, like composting and stuff like that. So they should have those um, plant mats in there. So I'm going to try to remember next week to pop in there and buy one. It's not, I mean, I don't know what you mean by planted. I just have it, I have it laying right there. It's live moss that I ordered and I've been misting it, trying to keep it alive. So far it's staying green. Amber said it won't like technically grow and spread, but if you have full spectrum lights and keep it damp, it'll stay green and at least stay alive. So you can see the stuff on the bottom is the live stuff, and then that stuff up there is what I bought from Petco. Oh yeah, they just like scramble all over the place. They never stay still. In the research reading that I was doing this past week about um, hermit crab respiration and things like that, Home Depot has them in the garden center. Yeah, I'm just trying to avoid going to any of the those stores because it takes it takes three hours just to get to wherever you want to be inside the store. This little place is literally next door to my office. I can run in and be in and out in you know like five minutes. A trip to Home Depot is like a half hour minimum. 
and it's over in a busy part of town. So anyway, I was reading, um, and one of the things that I read that I wasn't aware of before is that hermit crabs can use the sete or seti, the fine hairs on their body, not only to bring water to their mouth and pass it through their mouth, but when they're dug under, they can also use those hairs to absorb moisture from the substrate around them. So if they're underground for a while and it's particularly dry and they didn't have enough shell water or something like that, they can use those hairs to absorb moisture from the substrate around them and keep themselves hydrated and damp, which I thought was pretty cool. So that's another use of those hairs that are all over their claws and their body. And those actually aren't hairs. They don't grow from a hair follicle. They're actually part of the exoskeleton. That's why it sheds with the exoskeleton. I'm having a pool party back there. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. So they were talking about how um, the Indo or Brevimanus could stay underground and survive just off of the moisture in the substrate for at least two weeks. Which obviously when they go down for a molt, they take water with them. So that's different. So we're talking like a non-molt situation to where maybe... Um, you know, it's, it's the dry season, they can still burrow down into a wet sand and absorb moisture from the wet sand. There's some more stuff that uh, I'm reading because I want to write a little more about respiration and the abdominal lung that hermit crabs have that nobody else seems to ever discuss or refer to. And I, I've known about it for several years, but I haven't really ever had time or a strong motivation to try to write about it. And so I have been doing more research the past few weeks about it so that I can put together an article that explains the respiration a little more clearly in just layman's terms so that we can kind of understand a little bit better how they use uh, their gills and the abdominal lung and their uh, brachial lungs to all uh, help them breathe air. Little guys. That one's very peachy and pink. This one seems to be enjoying the color enhancer. So we do have one taker there. Do you have a go-to food for your crabs that, that they always eat without fail? Thanks for the hearts. No, I don't think that's... No, that's another Caribbean back there. More fruits than fishy stuff. Yeah, I would probably agree with that. I tried one time to feed my crabs a um, salmon head. So I have a girlfriend who works at a college... And she was friends with the chef who ran the culinary program there. And she had hermit crabs for a while. And she snagged this salmon head for me because she thought my crabs would love it. I thought they would love it too. I put it in the tank and it stunk so bad. I think they ate the eyeball and that was it. They didn't touch any of the rest of it. Now you would have thought they would have gone crazy for a fresh fish head.
but eh, they were just like, eh, we'll eat the eye. That's it. We're done. I did see someone post this week that um, somebody who I feel like was in Indonesia maybe or something like that, not an English-speaking country, and his crabs had um, his laid eggs or hatched their eggs out, and they were currently still alive, But he, and he says it happens all the time, but they don't survive, of course, because he doesn't have... Yeah, right? They ate the eye. It was gross, but it was so typical. I bring him this amazing meal that they should have been, like, so crazy over, and all they ate was the eye. But... He said he feeds salmon to his crabs all the time. And because somebody was asking him, like, how he gets them to mate and hatch their eggs so so frequently. And he's like, well, I'd feed them salmon. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But I don't know that mine would eat salmon. Guess I should try. Hello. Okay, guys, well, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I'm getting very congested from whatever allergy reaction I'm having. So I'm getting sniffly and itchy. Hope you guys are entering the contest this month, both the Calendar Crab and the Crab Attack of the Month, as well as the crab -o lantern You don't have to... You don't have to only carve. You can paint or come up with some other clever way to create a hermit crab-related uh, jack-o'-lantern and post your pictures on the site. Hopefully win some prizes. If you win the Crabble Lantern contest, you get to pick an item from the Cafe Press store that's valued up to $30. Thanks, Pam. It is fun doing this. I Even if I'm just down here talking to myself, it's always fun to watch the Krabbies. If you win the uh, Calendar Crab or Crab Head of the Month, you'll get to pick from the prize closet from the existing prizes that we have. So, um, make sure you take some pictures and enter. I think I have one for Calendar Crab I'm going to enter. Um, obviously, if I win, I don't take the prizes, but it's nice to have the photos for when we do the, the full year calendar. And if you have a winning photo of your Hermit Crab and you want us to put it on to um, an item at the Cafe Press store, we can do that for you. Like if you want a mug or a bag or something with your picture on it. Um, you can tell us which item you want to buy and then we can put your picture on it and then you can purchase your own picture on some cool stuff. Show off your cute crabbies. Just a reminder, Vanessa's going to do a Periscope tomorrow also, roughly the same time. So if you want to check in with her, you can follow her on the... It's She's going to be Periscoping from the Lycos account, which is a Land Hermit Crab Owners Society. Twitter account so you'll want to go and follow them that way when she comes on Periscope under that account you'll get a, a little notification so you can tune in and watch thanks for joining and I'll see you guys on the website and over on the Facebook group and we'll be back next Saturday Periscoping again talk to you later